Hello everyone, welcome to Doctor Story. I'm Anjal, Anjal Arora, Content Head at MyCare. Today, we won't talk about any disease, disorder or syndrome with our doctor. Instead, we will talk about what does it actually mean to be a doctor? How is their life and how do they view life? And for this very interesting insight into a doctor's life, we have invited Dr. Deepa Shri, Senior Consultant and Clinical Lead of Intervention Radiology at Rela Hospital, Chennai. Yes, Anshil. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me over here. So, Doctor, did you know you want to become a doctor like ever since or there was a, you know, a moment of realization, that aha moment that is where I want, you know, this is it. I want to pursue this profession. Um, I would say in my case, it wasn't an aha moment. I'm sure in many people's lives, there, there would be some aha moments. Uh, but when it comes to uh, becoming a doctor or choosing this as my career, uh, it wasn't uh, an aha moment, but it was my father was my inspiration. My father is a doctor and uh, I was quite fascinated to the uh, white coat, I would say. So uh, that he used to wear and I used to see him ever since, uh, you know, I was in my second standard or third standard. He used to have a small clinic uh, right in front of a house and you know I just used to see the patient in flow and then I used to see so that was it started with a fascination or uh, you know being passionate about you know seeing patients and then wearing that white coat etc cetera, etc cetera. so that is where it started uh, but kind of it just kind of, uh, it, it became deeper and deeper as I started uh, seeing him talking to patients when patients come back to him I used to sit in his clinic during my free time all the time just right next to him I used to have one little chair Next to him, I used to sit right next to him and I used to just see how he interacts with patients. And he's a pediatrician and uh, something kind of, uh, uh, you know, made me uh, feel so attracted to this speciality when patients come back, when they recover and, you know, when they come back and meet my dad and then when they say how, how beautiful they feel, you know, after the recovery and in the kind of calls he used to receive, uh, you know, saying that, you know, they are, they are, they are absolutely fine. So these were some of those little things which kind of added on. And I would say it was more of an add-on and a cumulative effect which made me become a doctor. Yeah. Well, that's so uh, inspirational to see, you know, when we look up to our yeah. fathers and get into that profession. So apart from that, was there a time when you felt overburdened with the amount of, you know, time, effort that should be put in this profession specifically? Uh, yes. Um, I mean, like in everybody's life, you know, we all have families. Uh, so when I had my uh, son, uh, that is when, you know, I was in UK uh, back then and uh, I worked in UK before I moved out to India. So when I was in UK, uh, you know, it's, it's not that, you know, we never used to have any help from the parents or anybody because it's not possible for parents to be with us all the time, parents or in-laws for that matter. Although they did try their best and they used to help us out, you know, at least for three or four months. Uh, but when, when, when my boy was small and I used to literally juggle between the family life and, you know, in the work life there, it's, you know, you know, you have to be there bang on at nine o'clock. And I used to travel 75 kilometers every day from where I lived to reach to this hospital and be there by nine in the morning. Um, yet, you know, you have to take care of your, you know, uh, you know, he was only four months old when I had to leave him and get back to work. Uh, so that was the most difficult time when I felt, okay, there is, there is absolutely nothing here. There is no one to help, uh, but you know, you have to leave home by 7.30 and who is there to take care of the child? And I need to make sure that I need to be back um, again at um, home by around you know six o'clock or something like that but we finished work at five and again traveling back 75 kilometers and then coming back to where I lived uh, that was quite daunting at that point of time and uh, that is when I felt overburdened in my life I would say yeah so with all that hustling what kept you going and what would be the most gratifying thing of being a doctor uh, see the the passion for uh, you know for being a doctor or the for, for the passion for this profession has always been there because uh, uh, this is what I uh, really feel that we all must do you know we all should choose a profession that we are passionate about if you're passionate about something if you love something no matter how daunting it may look no matter what the responsibilities may be no matter how overburdened you may feel yet you know, the love for that profession would never let you give up that profession at any point of time. Uh, so I kept going because I just absolutely loved it. And, you know, if it is, uh, whether it is nine to five or whether it is my on calls, no matter what responsibilities I had, 
I could never do something else other than this particular profession. So I would say it's a love for my job and it's a love for my profession. I always had that spark. It's been a never ending love, I would say. So it's not something that I had to take up because of the pressure from my parents or because of, uh, you know, pressure from somebody or the society or just because, you know, my friend did this and I got into this profession. It's never been that. Uh, the reason why I chose this profession is I loved it. And uh, so if you love something, I don't think it really burdens you. Having said that, when I said I was overburdened, it's just that it was just too much to handle. That's about it. But sure, you just kind of, uh, you know, figure your ways out as you go along. So I just figured my ways around and then you know, slowly it's just like you just go with, just go with the flow. And uh, I just got used to it. Uh, but yeah, so uh, yeah, th th this is uh, something... Um, uh, that I absolutely adore and love the most. Yeah, I think that's a big takeaway for all of us, speci specifically for our generation, that we should pursue what we love and nothing else should come in between. No other factor. Absolutely. Yeah, so doctor, totally. was there like, do some doctors regret becoming doctors? And why do they regret? And how common you have been in contact with a person who is a doctor and is regret, regretful about the profession? Or why why did he choose doctor over any other profession? Yeah, uh, two things I would say here. See, one thing is my previous answer would probably answer partly whatever I'm going to say right now. Uh, first thing is uh, when you choose a profession, uh, obviously, if you are passionate about something and if you know this is a field that I'm going to be and if you are 100% certain about a particular specialty that you want to enter, I don't think you would regret much over it. Yeah, that is number one thing. Right. Having said that, that is number one. So let's say, uh, you know, you're, you're passionate about this specialty and then you're, you are 100% sure about one particular uh, you know, field or a sub-speciality and then you take, you take up that particular speciality. What happens in everybody's life is, although you know, we are passionate about a profession. There is something called as passion as well, isn't it? I'm talking about mm. a profession is something that we do for others. Passion is something that we do for ourselves. Yeah, the rest of the world need not look at it, but it is something that you do for yourself. Right. What I have seen uh, with my own colleagues um, or, you know, somebody who I've worked with is just that they uh, kind of, they get too much into the speciality and too much into the profession that they don't allocate themselves time for themselves. They don't mm -hmm. allocate time for themselves. They don't consider their life as a priority. It's just that everybody else is a priority. You know, taking care of the patients is my priority or, you know, writing papers and papers or journals, getting your, uh, uh, you know, for name and fame and mm -hmm. other things that you do for your own self. When you become too inclined that way, without focusing on your own self, without considering yourself as the priority, it just gets too much, isn't it? You would probably regret, oh, why on earth did I become a doctor? Hmm. It's not just in this profession, any profession for that matter. If you're focusing too much on your work without allocating time for yourself and without considering yourself as your priority, you would regret and you would just, there will be some thought, oh, I wish I took something else. Uh, I wish I had a job wherein, you know, I could just chill and, you know, do nothing. I wish I could work mm. from home. Uh, I wish it wasn't like this. You know, you would just get that thought. So um, I would say if you kind of, if you consider profession is just 25% of your life, 25% is your passion, another 25% is your mission, and another 25% is your vocation. Yeah, so these are all the four different things that, and these are all integrated. It's a very close integration of all these things put together. If one understands that, I don't think you would regret any profession for that matter. Absolutely. So it's it's about keeping work as a part of life and not seeing it as your own life, like a whole you life in it. your work. So many yeah, doctors yeah. actually have to work day and night and might also have emergencies to attend any time. So how, how do they balance their work life? Um, again, here, uh, you know, the, the family comes, becomes a priority here, right? So when it comes right. to the work-life balance, again, I always say that, you know, never call it a work-life balance because, uh, you know, if you're considering um, work as something separate it's from different. life, hmm. then you would call it, yeah, it's something different sure. to life than you would call it work-life balance. It's more of integration of your profession and passion, I would say, or profession and family or profession and whatever you may want to take, or you, you may want to call um, so when it comes to, uh, you know, the night calls or the emergencies and how you handle it, I think communication plays a very important role here. 
you know it's it's more of the expectations that our family has from us uh, you know that we just need to kind of sit and talk to them we just need to communicate with them uh, because you know whatever we do in life if there is no communication and if people start assuming things uh, when there is zero communication at home and when you actually don't tell what you are doing but then you just go and you attend a call and then you come back but then you actually don't tell what has happened share what has happened share your stories with people at home uh, make them understand what your day looks like and uh, so if you can make them understand if you can communicate with people around you i don't think we will be burdened uh, because all why do we feel the pressure now if we can think of this particular question why do i feel this pressure it's only that you know you have this pressure of uh, meeting someone else's expectations they expect you to be at home at so and so time and then when you don't come back you just feel oh what they might be thinking you know about me not coming back home on time you know they might be upset about me coming late they might be upset that i'm not spending enough time with me uh, with, with them etc cetera, etc cetera. so these are all the stories that we create inside our own head which makes us feel out of balance but when we understand that you know if you can explain to them this is what it is and uh, if you can tell them and you know maybe uh, you know cater one day specifically for them train them i would say train is a bad way to say this <laughs> but unfortunately um, you know just tell them this is what it is i think communication is the key here and uh, most of the families are falling apart uh, when you know people fail to understand uh, you know our situation even though you know you try to communicate with them so uh, that's how you can handle uh, you know both family and uh, uh, the work so the key here is communication i think that's overall yeah. uh, shadows everything every aspect of our life is based on communication what we speak totally. how we speak and how we are actually expressing our own self absolutely um so we have seen you are very active on social media platforms and especially with those dancing reels and for all the viewers will be sharing her social media handle in the description box do follow her so did you face any comments or criticism when you first started such reels as a doctor of course yeah so uh, you know the human life is all about judgments right so we become yeah. judgmental about each and everything yeah so i that is how uh, you know the society is conditioned uh, we all have been conditioned to uh, a particular pattern from every profession yeah doctors are supposed to be like this a politician is supposed to behave like this a policeman is supposed to behave like this uh, you know everybody they have got certain expectations or certain assumptions about each profession now uh, when you actually become your own self and when you actually showcase your inner self not your outer self not your professional self when you showcase your passion to the outside world there will be a lot of criticism there will be a lot of judgment which i was totally uh, aware of and i accepted that because and that's how they are i mean nobody is to be blamed for this because that's how we are all conditioned you know the human mind is like that so i believed in uh, breaking the stereotypes and uh, people uh, when i started posting my dance videos or when i started doing in fact from my own family uh, they were completely against it and they were like you know don't do this because you know you're losing your value in the society uh, don't showcase yourself as that because you need to maintain your dignity uh, when it comes to certain things people look up to you etc etc what i never understood is i'm not trying to showcase something which is not me i'm trying to showcase something which is me uh, so if i'm trying to showcase something which is me why should i hide in fact everybody else should do the same thing and if people Absolutely. cannot accept me yeah mm. so if people cannot accept me the way i am then uh, what's the point of this life you know we cannot be hiding things from everybody all our life life is so short that if you live the, your entire life hiding things from people showcasing a different uh, uh, you know the facade of yourself without showcasing your real you then i just feel i'm not being true to myself uh you know why should i be uh, showcasing something else to somebody else that means i'm not being true to myself so let me be true to myself because it just gives me that happiness and i will just do whatever gives me that happiness uh no matter what somebody says everything kind of it just goes underneath my happiness because i'm happy my happiness level is here and i'm vibrating at that particular level at a very high vibration whatever people say it's all here so it can never come here so this kind of overtakes whatever people say here so that way it actually i became unaffected by what uh, you know few people not everybody i would say i mean there are a lot of people i must say 
I'm so so grateful that people really you know they so many of my friends and you know all my uh, social media friends they just kind of message me and say oh we you know we missed your post uh, last mm. week you know why didn't you post you know we're looking forward to your post so it just gives me a great boost because i know that there are few souls out there uh, who are looking out to get inspired every day and you know whether it is my status or whether it is anything even if i can inspire those few souls who are wanting to get inspired i think it's worth it and i've lived my life and um, that is where i am right now well i'm so glad we are having this conversation today there was so much learning out of our you know what you are sharing and absolutely i too feel the same that you should be you you are not playing another's role in somebody's life who would play your role if you are playing somebody else exactly. the stereotypical doctor that we think of you know doctor's life is such doctor sleeps at this time wakes up you know we we are we are actually accustomed to think like that so Exactly. going out of the those boundaries definitely takes a lot of courage i would say it's not just a reel or not just a video posted by a common man with the profession comes very much responsibility and that as you said people look up to you and you have to maintain that dignity but we often take dignity as someone who is not socially active not posting about personal life who is into his or her own life yeah so totally. finally doctor uh, what's your suggestion for aspiring doctors like those things that they should consider and bear in mind before opting for a doctorate um first thing uh, i think it will be a recap of whatever i said until now uh, the most important thing is uh, just sit and figure out what you are passionate about that is the number one thing because never ever do anything that your parents ask you to do or you're because of the peer pressure or the pressure mm. from the society or because certain some things have certain value in the society so never ever take up a profession because every profession is dignified every profession has got its own value no matter what it is because at the end of the day we are just doing service to others whether you are a doctor or whether you are uh, you know somebody uh, working at uh, whatever you are doing so every person it's a service right the person who helps me at home the person who cleans my office it's a service to me yeah and um, whatever i am doing it's a service to another person so it's a service to mankind at the end of the day whether you are a doctor or whether you are doing anything so every profession has got its own value has got its own dignity so choose something that you are passionate about that is number one thing and uh, the second thing uh, that i would say is if you end up taking this profession please 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 don't think this is your only life because you know you have other things as well so we need to make sure that you kind of give time for yourself so that you're not mentally bogged down at any point about taking the, the taking up this particular profession you should never regret at a later stage thinking why did i take this profession so that is the second thing and the third uh, important thing that i would say is uh believe in holistic living we are all uh, you know modern doctors yeah so uh, modern medicine rather so in modern medicine we have forgotten the ancient healing practices yeah so being an allopathic doctor what i'm trying to say today is practice holistic healing when i say holistic healing what i what do i mean by holistic healing when a patient comes to me your sometimes we treat the patients lab values okay somebody has got uh, let's say low hemoglobin or anemia or somebody has got some deranged kidney functions etc etc we treat that if somebody comes to me with the tumor it should not be my focus should not be like i'm just treating the tumor but this patient has got mental issues emotional issues lot of other issues going around him yeah when we talk to patients we as doctors sometimes we don't give our time to them they are coming to us and they are like you know our service is to them so when you have to do the service to them please give yourself completely and we have to listen to them so communication doesn't mean we need to talk all the time or just prescribe some medicines and give it to them just be with them and listen to them and try and understand what they're trying to tell you because this is a complaint i receive from some of the patients when they come and tell me nobody has got time for us you know they just see us they just send us you know write some pills and then and then we are out but then the trauma that they go through you know having a disease even a 
headache for single day it just kind of completely upsets you all day you cannot carry on with your activities imagine somebody is living with a disease it's not an easy thing to handle so address not just the physical aspect of the patient but if you can address the mental aspects of the patient the emotional aspects of the patient it's a holistic package that we can offer and we need to have that bond with the patient that connect with the patient that connect with the profession that connect with the service that we are offering every day and your life is complete when you do that because all of us here we are here with a purpose and our purpose in life is not to prove to the rest of the world oh i'm a doctor with so and so degrees and i have all this in my life it's not about that it's about something else so we need to introspect sit and understand why did i choose this why am i doing this so question yourself and be skeptical about each and everything and finally break the stereotype so <laughs> do something that you are passionate about um you know inspire others by what you do so that is uh, what i would say well it was in indeed a deep dive into a doctor's life i much appreciate the time you have given to us for this discussion doctor and thank you so much for joining thank you so much anchal it's been an absolute pleasure thank you so much and i'm so honored to be here to share whatever i feel uh, to the uh, rest of the world uh, thanks so much once again thank you much obliged thank you